Hi there, in this video I'm going to do a revision question on vectors. So let's take a look at this question. Question number two, the position vectors of a and b are as follows. So a is given by vector a and that's equal to the vector i minus two vector j plus three vector k and b is given by vector b which is equal to two vector i plus four vector j minus the vector k. In part A to this question, find the vector equation for the line AB. So back to the paper and pen. So we've been given these vectors A and B. Let me show you how to work out the vector equation of the line passing through these vectors with fixed points A and B. So if we go to this screenshot, as a reminder, if you're given the vector OA, which is A, and the vector OB, which is B, to work out the vector equation of the line passing through the two fixed points A and B, the formula is R is equal to A plus lambda B minus A. Now, if you're unaware of this result, I have created a video explaining this result along with additional examples, and I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. But let me show you how this works with this question. So back to the paper and pen. Now, first, I would recommend you calculating the vector b minus a. So let's work out the vector b minus the vector a. This will be the direction vector of the line ab. So vector b, which is 2i, plus 4j, minus k. So that's what we had from the question. Minus vector a, which is i, minus 2j plus 3k. Now if we add the like components, so 2i minus i is i, 4j minus minus 2j is plus 6j. So be careful when you add the like components. And minus k minus 3k is minus 4k. So this is the vector B minus A, and hence this will be the direction vector of the line AB. So we have the vector B minus A. So to work out the vector equation of the line AB, remember the result, R is equal to A plus lambda B minus A. And let's replace the data so vector r is equal to the vector a, which is i minus 2j plus 3k plus lambda. And the vector b minus a we worked out in a previous step, i plus 2j minus 4k. So this should be the solution to part a. So we have another part to do, back to the screenshot. So in part B, the line AB meets this line, R is equal to, in column vector form, minus six, minus six, seven, plus T into three, minus one and zero, at the point C. And we need to find the coordinates of C. So in other words, this vector equation of the line AB meets the line given, and we need to find, in other words, the point of intersection of these lines. So let me show you how this is done, back to the paper and pen. So let me rewrite this in IJK form. So vector R will be minus six I, minus six J, plus seven K, plus T into, 3i minus j and I have a 0k. So both of my equations are in the form i, j and k. Now first things first, for intersecting lines we need to look at the direction vectors and if one of them is a scalar of the other then they're parallel. However, if one of them isn't a scalar of the other, that means that they're not parallel, which means that they're either intersecting or skew. Now, for this problem, 
they do meet so we don't need to do the parallel check so let's move on to the next step so in the next step let's equate this vector equation of the line AB with this vector given as part of part B so let's copy this down so we have I minus 2j plus 3k plus lambda into I plus 6j minus 4k and let's equate that to the line given in part B this one which is minus 6i minus 6j plus 7k plus t into 3i minus j Now once you've done this, we need to equate the components of i, j and k on both sides. So by equating components of i, j and k on both sides, so in this case Let's equate the I components. Let's take a red pen. So I have an I component here, along with a lambda into one. And on the right hand side, I have minus six, the I component on the right hand side, and a T times three. So I've highlighted the I components in red. So on the left, the component of I is one, plus lambda times one is plus lambda. And on the right, I have minus 6 plus t times 3, so plus 3t. Let's call that equation number 1. Let's do the same with the j components. So on the left-hand side, taking the green pen, I have minus 2 plus lambda times 6. And on the right-hand side, I have minus 6 plus t times minus 1. So minus 2 on the left plus lambda times 6, meaning plus 6 lambda on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I have minus 6, so minus 6, plus t times minus 1, which is minus t. Let's call that equation 2. As far as the k components are concerned, on the left-hand side, I have 3, so 3, plus lambda times minus 4, so in other words, minus 4 lambda, that is equal to, on the right, I have 7 only. So that's the only k component. So that's equal to 7. Let's name that equation number 3. So here are the three equations at the moment. So the next step is to take any two equations and solve simultaneously to work out the scalars, which are lambda and t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Uh, these two equations, 2 and 3, but as I said, you can take any two equations to solve simultaneously to calculate the scalars lambda and t. So let me copy these equations on the reverse. So minus 2 plus 6 lambda equals minus 6 minus t. So minus 2 plus 6 lambda is equal to, let me remind myself, minus 6 minus t. So that's equation 2. As for equation 3, 3 minus 4 lambda is equal to 7. So 3 minus 4 lambda is equal to 7. Now I'm going to take equation 3 and find lambda first and then we'll put the value of lambda that we found into equation 2. So from equation 3, so equation 3 is 3 minus 4 lambda, that is 7. So if I take the minus 4 lambda to the right and the 7 to the left, I'm going to have 4 lambda, which is, 7, which is 3 minus 7, which is minus 4. I make the lambda value minus 1. So that should be the value of lambda. Let me then put the value of lambda into equation 2. So remember, once you've selected your equations to solve simultaneously, so in my case, I've selected two and three, 
you only use 2 and 3 to find the values of the scalars. So I need to use either 2 and 3 only to work out the other scalar, which is t. So let me put lambda then, which is minus 1, into equation number 2 to give me minus 2 plus 6 into lambda being minus 1. That is equal to minus 6 minus t. So let's get rid of the brackets. So we have minus 2, 6 into minus 1 is minus 6 on the left hand side. That is equal to minus 6 minus t on the right hand side. So I can cancel the two minus sixes on both sides to give me t which is 2. So that should be the value of t. So I have the value of lambda being minus 1 t which is 2. So in order to find the point of intersection you can either put the lambda value or the t value into either of the equations for a, b or the equation given in part b. So I'm going to put uh, the lambda value, so our lambda value is minus 1. Let me put that into the vector equation of the line AB to find the point of intersection. You can just as well, as I say, put the T value 2 into the equation given in part B and you should get the same answer for the point of intersection because the point of intersection is unique. So let me put my lambda value. So I'm going to choose to put lambda which is minus 1 into, so if I put it into the vector equation for AB, R is I minus 2J plus 3K. So I minus 2J plus 3K plus lambda which is minus 1 into, and let me, let me remind myself, I plus 6J minus 4K. So I plus 6J minus 4K. All we do now is we add the like components. So let's have a look. So I plus minus 1 times I is 0I. So we can neglect that. Minus 2J plus minus 1 times 6j so minus 2j minus 6j is minus 8j and 3k plus minus 1 times 4k so 3k plus 4k is 7k so this is the point of intersection in vector form so if you go back to the screenshot we need the coordinates of C. So going back to the paper and pen, so let's write this as a coordinate. So the coordinates of C. So I don't have an I component. So zero for X. Coefficient of J will be the Y coordinate. So the coefficient of J is minus eight, that being the Y coordinate of C. Coefficient of k is plus 7, that is the z coordinate. So coordinates of c should be 0, minus 8, 7. So that completes that part, and that also sadly ends this video. So I hope you found this video helpful. So just to add, if you're unfamiliar with the concept being used to solve this question, I'll provide links to the videos that I've created explaining the theory that is related to this particular question. So I'll provide links to those videos in the description below. Other than that, if you enjoyed the video, a like rating is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice related exercises and I hope to see you again. Thank you.